Logic's new Retro Synth is designed to be powerful but also easy to use. It has four different modes, each of which has unique sound generation capabilities. Let's check them out now. Load up the synth on a software instrument track by selecting Retro Synth Stereo from the instrument slot. The synth starts out in analog mode with a low pass filtered, sawtooth bass sound. Open up the filter so we can hear the oscillators more clearly by dragging the cutoff parameter in the filter panel up to 1.00. This makes the sawtooth oscillator sound a lot brighter and clearer. Each of the four modes has its own unique capability and analogs is pulse width modulation, which the synth calls shape modulation. Turn the mix fader all the way up to 0.00, .00 so that we only hear shape 1's output. Set the shape 1 knob to 23% or so. This gives us a pulse wave with a medium sized width. Turn the shape modulation knob down to minus 1.000. .00. This tells RetroSynth that we want the LFO to modulate the pulse width. Now in your player note, you'll hear that a rapid movement has been introduced to the sound thanks to the LFO modulation. In the LFO panel, turn the rate down to about 0.5Hz or so. This makes the movement a lot slower. We can also sync the LFO to the project's tempo by clicking the sync toggle. This is useful if you want the movement in the sound to stay in time with the rest of the elements in your project. Play a note and turn the mod wheel all the way up. You'll hear that the amount of pulse width modulation increases and vibrato, pitch modulation, is also introduced. You can control the speed of the vibrato by clicking the vibrato tab next to the LFO tab and adjusting its rate. Try setting the vibrato rate to 1 over 64. This gives us a rougher tone when we turn up the mod wheel. We can control the amount of pitch modulation with the vibrato knob in the oscillator panel. Set it to 0, 0.00 semi. Now when you sweep the mod wheel as you play a note, you'll hear that the pulse width changes, but no pitch modulation is introduced. Now we've seen how pulse width modulation works, let's try out a different mode. In the oscillator panel, click the sync tab. You'll notice that the controls common to both modes, in this case the modulation and vibrato parameters, retain the settings we used in analog mode. In sync mode, the waveform of the second oscillator restarts whenever the first one completes a wave cycle, which is useful for creating more aggressive timbres. Because the mix fader is set to OSC1, we can't hear how this sounds yet. Turn the fader all the way down to 1.00 .00 and we'll hear OSC2. Play a note and you'll hear a dramatic sync sweep. Turn the sync modulation knob up to 1.000. .00. This sets the modulation source as the filter envelope rather than the LFO. Now when you play a note, you'll hear that the sync effect occurs just at the start of the sound, rather than having a continuous effect. In the filter envelope panel, bring the sustain down to 0.00, .00 and set the decay to 48 milliseconds to tighten it up. This gives us a punchier sound. You can control the overall level of the effect with the sync knob in the oscillators panel. That's pretty much it for the sync mode, so click the table tab in the oscillators panel. In this mode, the oscillators are wavetable based and offer a wider variety of timbres than the previous modes we've looked at. As the shape modulation knob is set to filter onv, with the current tight envelope shape, we'll continue to get a fast percussive movement at the start of the sound. To hear the many available waveforms, sweep the shape 2 knob as you play a note. As you can hear, there are a wide variety of timbres on offer. Set the shape 2 knob to 0 0.350 and you'll get a brassy tone. Next set the shape modulation to minus 0 0.100. This gives us a gentle LFO movement through the wave shape that results in a smoother sound.
The wavetable oscillators have lots of interesting tones up their sleeves, so it's worth taking another listen to what they've got to offer once you finish this tutorial. Finally, it's time to investigate the synth's frequency modulation mode. Click the FM tab in the oscillators panel. You'll notice that this mode has a different control layout to the others, and that's because it operates quite differently. Currently the mix knob is set to modulator, which gives us a simple tone. The modulator signal modulates the frequency of the carrier signal. We can adjust the coarse tuning, harmonic, fine tuning, inharmonic, and timbre, shape of the modulator signal with the vertical faders. To hear how these changes affect the carrier signal, turn the mix fader all the way down to 0.00. .00. This gives us that familiar gritty FM sound. You can control the frequency modulation amount by adjusting the FM fader, with higher values resulting in more harmonics and a rougher sound. The FM and or harmonic amount can be modulated by the filter envelope or the LFO. This is handled by the toggle switch and modulation knob at the bottom left hand corner of the oscillator panel. We've seen how each of the synths modes work, so let's take a look at some of the less obvious common parameters. It's worth noting that the filter and amplitude envelopes have velocity faders, which control the amount that the velocity level of incoming notes affects the level of the envelopes. This can be used to expressive effect, but you might want to turn these levels down if you are after a more consistent sound. By default, the LFO vibrato are controlled by the mod wheel, but by clicking the button that says wheel, you can also choose to have them controlled by aftertouch or a combination of wheel and aftertouch. Finally, if you click the settings button in the bottom right hand corner, a panel will pop up with various MIDI to parameter routings, as well as global controls, including the synths, unison, detune settings.